About five years ago, I started working with a team to develop a technology that would address infant mortality in developing countries. We were about to set off to India to do this work, but we had a critical question in front of us. Were we going to design a solution that could be used by doctors and trained healthcare professionals, or one that could be used by mothers in village settings? In answering this question, we came upon a revelation that has completely changed the way I think about technology. My journey started when I was doing research in India, where the largest number of infant deaths occur. As I was traveling from village to village, I would meet countless women who had lost their babies, like Sujata. Sujata is from a village in South India, where the nearest hospital is over 15 miles away. She lost not only one but all three of her babies. She described to me her desperate attempts to seek care for each of her infants, but in every case. She didn't have the money to access traditional hospitals or modern medical equipment. Sujata is not alone. Every year around the world, three million babies die in the first 28 days of their life. That's six babies every minute. Most of these deaths go forgotten about for the most part, except for by mothers. It was only upon meeting these selfless and courageous women that I began to understand the suffering behind the numbers. And I came to see that a mother, no matter how poor or impoverished or uneducated, will do anything to save her child. One of the biggest problems these vulnerable babies face, especially low birth weight and premature babies, is staying warm. They're unable to regulate their own body temperature. That's the primary function of an incubator. But incubators are expensive. They cost up to twenty thousand dollars. They require a constant supply of electricity, and they're difficult to operate. So you're not going to find them in rural areas. Instead, you see local solutions like light bulbs or space heaters. Solutions that are both unsafe and ineffective. You also have traditional practices like skin-to-skin -skin care or putting the baby against a mother's bare chest. This is an incredibly effective form of thermal regulation and has a host of other benefits like promoting breastfeeding and mother-to-child bonding. But it's difficult for mothers to do this 24 hours a day, especially in cases where they have to go back to work days after they deliver to support the rest of the family. In seeing this situation, my team and I realized there was a need for a low-cost, locally appropriate solution to this problem. We wanted something that could be used by mothers like Sujata. That meant it had to be extremely easy and intuitive to use, and able to function without a constant supply of electricity. So we went to the drawing board. And this is what we came up with. This is one of the earliest prototypes of our device. This is the Embrace Infant Warmer.、It、looks like a little sleeping bag for a baby. The core technology sits underneath the sleeping bag. It's a pouch of a wax-like substance, a phase change material, that, when melted, maintains a constant temperature for hours at a stretch. As we looked at this, we realized this looks nothing like an incubator. And as we did more and more research, we realized the populations we were interacting with were mostly uneducated, illiterate women. We were scared to take this home with them. What if something went wrong? What if the baby was harmed because of inappropriate use of the technology? At that point, we decided it would be far safer to first put this into the hands of doctors, of trained healthcare professionals, where it could be tested in more controlled environments. Small clinics had a need for this, anyways. We could start with the product there. And then refine it as necessary for use in more risky environments at home with the mothers. So we came up with a version of the product for use in hospital settings. We put a clear window in the front so doctors could view the baby's breathing and color. We made it compatible with IV lines. That's what this flap is for. Most hospitals in India have at least some access to electricity, so we created an electric heater that would require 30 minutes of power, after which the wax pouch would stay warm on its own for the next four hours. Looks simple, but this went through hundreds of iterations and over two years of intense product development and clinical testing. Finally, at the end of 2011, we were ready to launch the product. I still remember how excited I was to hand carry the very first unit to our first customer. And there she is. In the meantime, we continue to develop a version of the product that could be used at home by the mothers. We went to dozens of villages, interviewing hundreds of mothers to make sure that the product was appropriate for their settings. We created a baby interface that would allow for even easier access to the baby, so mothers could breastfeed and provide skin-to-skin -skin care. 
we created a wax pouch that would last for eight hours rather than four hours so mothers could sleep through the night. We put a temperature, yeah, nice thing for the moms, right? <laughs> we put a temperature indicator on the pouch to let moms know when the product was in the right temperature, when they needed to reheat. And initially, this was numeric, so you could see the exact temperature. But as we went into villages, something funny happened. Mothers would say to us, we don't trust Western medicine. If you told me to give a certain dosage of medicine to my baby, I would cut it in half because it's probably too strong. If you told me to keep this at 98 degrees, I'd keep it at a little less than that because that's probably too warm. That led to a very important design decision to make it binary. Green means product is good to go. <laughs> Red means don't use it. Easy, right? We created a version of the heater that was powered with hot water instead of electricity. And we made the uh, instructions entirely pictorial so illiterate women could understand. We discovered that many women also couldn't read numbers, but they were familiar with the hand signals associated with counting. So that's what you see here on this poster. At the end of 2012, we were finally ready to pilot this product. This was the moment we had been waiting for for the last four years. We were really excited, but we were scared too. What if something went wrong? We went into the field and we started training doctors, nurses and mothers how to use the product, after which mothers would take it home with them. A couple weeks later, we went back and we conducted training assessments to make sure everyone retained the information. When we got the results back, we were shocked. Guess who it was who performed the best across these assessments? It was the moms. In retrospect, this makes perfect sense. In a country like India, you have one doctor for every 2,000 patients. Doctors simply don't have the time to pay careful attention to every patient or every new technology. But more importantly was the lesson I had learned in the very beginning, that a mother will do anything to save her child. But all that effort and all that care was lost if she couldn't access appropriate health care or technologies. But what if you could give these women a technology that empowered them to save their children? a technology that was powered by their love. This is what you would see. This is Mariamal. Mariamal has three children. She makes less than $2 a day. She gave birth to her son two months prematurely and borrowed $700 from friends, families and neighbors to put him in a neonatal intensive care unit. She herself didn't have money to stay in the hospital, so she slept on the floor outside. Eventually, she ran out of money. At that point, the doctor advised us to take our product home with her. Within a week's time, she reported the baby was gaining weight and starting to feed well. She said the product gave her hope. When we went back to visit just a week ago, we found a happy, healthy little boy. And there are many such similar stories. Through these experiences, I've come to learn that technology itself is only part of the solution. It's an enabler. But for technology to be effective, there must be intent from the person who's using it. No one has more intent to save a baby than a mother. This begs the question, are we designing solutions for the right people? Over the last 20 years, one of the Millennium Development Goals we've made the least progress on is reducing infant mortality. Public health experts believe that one of the biggest obstacles in reaching our goals is a huge shortage of healthcare workers. But why not instead focus on developing solutions for those who care the most about the child's survival? I'd like to end by coming back to Sujata. After Sujata told us her story and we showed her our product, she began to cry. And she said over and over again, maybe if I had this, Maybe I could have saved my babies. Those words haunt me, and they drive me. I believe we can solve challenging global problems even beyond infant mortality with the most powerful thing in the world, love. Technology alone can't change the world. Technology powered by love can. Thank you.